Hi, and welcome to my talk about my paper called Tangible Immersive Trauma Simulation is Mixed Reality the Next Level of Medical Skills Training. My name is Jakob Uhl and I will be presenting on behalf of my co-authors today from the Austrian Institute of Technology and the uh, University of Salzburg. This work is nested in the Horizon 2020 project MedFirst MR, which tries to find mixed reality solutions for helping medical first responders train better, with a special focus on mass casualty accidents. These kind of mass casualty accidents are maybe trained once a year and are really cumbersome. They involve hundreds of people, they cost a lot of money, uh, actors have to play the victims. Uh, and so the education can really be improved by offering a low cost and uh, effective solution that enables them to train more often. When looking at existing approaches, there are two rather disjunct uh, approaches to training first responders. So for one, uh, they train with medical training mannequins which enable skills training. You can use your actual tools and do certain procedures uh, with these training puppets. On the negative side, the realism here is really lacking because it's just a puppet. Uh, you don't have a visual uh, representation of the injuries and the environment is more or less a lab environment. On the other hand, there are VR training solutions which promise uh, high immersion uh, by representing uh, the injuries accurately uh, and, and visually and by providing the, the stressful environment in which uh, trainees um, act. On the negative side here is that a lot of tangible tools cannot really be integrated right now into VR uh, as trackers uh, have a certain size and so certain small tools aren't really possible right now to integrate. And what we propose is the mixed reality approach. So this would uh, enable us to have skills training in an immersive environment that enables using the tangible tools and also enables decision and processes to be trained. And this approach I will demonstrate to you today. Let me first talk a bit about the process of this project. So in the beginning, uh, we had requirement workshops where we talked with various uh, first responders across Europe, what their wants are, what their needs are for a mixed reality training solution. In the next step, we developed uh, certain scenarios and at the same time, we developed some personas of injured people. In the next step, we went into the ideation phase in close exchange with the medical first responder organizations. Uh, this was all about finding a balance between technical feasibility and the medical realism for uh, the prototypical scenario we wanted to test. Next, we went into the prototyping phase where we put everything together in Unity and also build our physical mannequin and the tools needed to perform the scenario we developed. Lastly, we did a user study and a workshop to test out the developed scenarios with medical first responders and medical training experts. The idea was to use a Vario XR3 headset, which is an extended reality uh, headset and which has pass-through video in a high quality. So you can render your hands and, for example, real tools on top of the virtual environment. In order to enable an overlay of the mannequin with a virtual avatar and on top of that, the real hands and the real tools from the video pass-through, we used chroma keying with a green blanket on the bottom and a green mannequin on top, which was tracked with fiducial markers. And in that way, we could take real objects into the virtual world and we could feel the haptic sensation of touching a virtual avatar. So here are a few pictures of what this all looked like. Uh, on the left, you can see the green mannequin uh, tracked with fiducial markers and the first responder just using the ammo bag. Uh, in the middle, you can see the corresponding uh, VR view with the overlaid hands and the overlaid tools. And on the right side, this is the trainer station where the trainer would role play, uh, role play the patient. So these are the tools we included in the simulation. For one, on the left, we have the ambu bag, which is used to ventilate uh, the patient. Then we have the stethoscope that when you hold it to the chest of the patient, the sound changes to the internal lung sounds and we have the oxygen mask. These are the different steps of the mixed reality scenario we uh, developed. Uh, at first, trainees would arrive at an accident scene and first make themselves an overview of what happened there. Then see two patients or potential patients which they would have to triage, meaning they would have to use the traffic light system, green, yellow, red, to see how severe their injuries are. Uh, 
the pregnant lady um, is unhurt and Toby on the right uh, is in a yellow state, meaning he has severe pain in the chest and has respiratory problems, but he can still talk. In phase one, the emergency check then begins. So the participants would check the respiratory system with the stethoscope. They would check if there are any obstructions by opening the mouth and they would attach a virtual oximeter on the fingers to have a monitor of heart rate and the oxygen level. In first two, uh, Toby would start to turn. So he would uh, turn a bit pale and bluish. His oxygen levels would decrease quickly. And after a while, Toby would get unconscious. So his eyes would close. You would not be able to talk with him anymore. And then the ventilation with the ambu bag would begin. And phase three is just about keeping Toby alive until the emergency doctor arrives, uh, which marks the end of the scenario. The user study we did focused on a major research question, which was whether the responsive tangible mannequin uh, in mixed reality would enable skills training for medical first responders. And so we split that into kind of two hypotheses. Uh, on the one hand, we wanted to see whether there was a high technology acceptance of the proposed solution. And on the other hand, we want to see if participants would also have high amounts of presence. Also, we collected some qualitative data during the workshops and during the discussions afterwards. Looking at the results, uh, overall, we could find high levels of technology acceptance. Um, only the factor of facilitating uh, conditions was a bit low as we did not give any kind of tutorial. So in a more refined state, uh, there ha would have to be more explanation of, of how the things work. Regarding presence, we have high amounts of physical presence. So the immersive environment really made them feel as if they were there. And also high amounts of self-presence, which can be explained by the participants seeing their own hands and feeling embodied in the world. On the other hand, the social presence was quite lowly rated. Looking at the EDA results, what we see here is the phasic signal of the electrodermal activity. And the more peaks in a given time frame, and the higher the peaks, the more arousal, the more stress, the more presence also uh, is, uh, is connected. And as we can see here in the baseline condition, people were relatively calm when they made themselves known to the situation at the beginning of the scenario, they were a bit more uh, activated. And then during the treatment, uh, when the patient uh, turned, um, they were really stressed out. Lastly, let's take a look at the qualitative uh, results. So for one, the use of this prototype was really intuitive for the participants. Many of them didn't even ask, what should I do? What, what's the problem here? Uh, because they just saw their tools and their hands and they just started doing instead of learning certain interactions, which is a major advantage of this approach. We found some problems with transparency of tools because some of the tools were quite transparent and so the green of the green mat shines through thereby making the tools a bit invisible. So in the future we have to use some matte spray to make them more matte or find novel chroma keying methods which allow for transparent tools. One criticism was that there was only a lim limited number of tools available which limits the decision space for the medical first responders thereby making it a bit easier because they know what to do with the tool set provided. And this is a general learning, maybe also for these training approaches using tangible tools that the decision base should be as open as in reality. Lastly, there is a need to indicate which elements are tangible and which are not. So this is not so much the case for the real tools, which could be seen anyways, but more for things like the mannequin, which are chroma keyed out, but still tangible. And this led to some confusion onto whether Grace, for example, the, the pregnant lady was also tangible or not. So if you use this kind of technology, there's a need to communicate tangibility better uh, and in, in a still immersive way. Yeah, in the end, um, we took from that that mixed reality seems like a viable solution for enabling immersive skill training in this context. And the, the lessons we learned uh, will guide the future development of this prototype. And we will also include a more advanced mannequin in the next iteration. Um, later this year, we will also have field trials, uh, which will include this improved version. And there we will do a full evaluation and also compare it to a purely VR approach to really have a nice comparison. And with that, I say thank you. And also thank you to all of my co-authors. Uh, if you want to get in touch, scan the QR code or email me.